All right, let's have a little practice on how to send email to faculty members. So let's go ahead and open a web browser. Here I am in Safari, and you can tell I'm on the university website, csustan.edu. And the reason is I need to email my professor, but I don't know his email address. So I can go to the A to Z directory if I know the name, or else I could find my way to the biology department webpage. Let's say that I'm interested in emailing Dr. Woolley. He's the department chair for biology. And I'm going to need to scroll down on the page, and it looks like, oh, there, there's his email right there swoolley at csustan.edu. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that and paste it into an email. So I'm going to start a new email message to swoolley at csustan. That looks right. And I think when you're sending email to faculty, there are a few things to keep in mind. The first one is you want to be really explicit about what kind of help you need. Usually when you email your professor, it's because you need help with something or you need to inform them about something that's happened. So you want to be very explicit. If you have a question about course material that you're hoping to get answered through email, you want to have a very specific question, and you also want to provide your guess at what the answer is. Most faculty won't just write you back with the answer. Instead, they'll ask more, well, what do you think? So you might as well include that in your first email. Another reason you might email your professor is to ask, when's a good time to meet? I can't make it to your office hours. When can I come by? If you do that, you want to make sure you provide some times that would be good times for you to meet with them so that they have some choice to start with. You might also email a professor if you need help with something specific on campus. Maybe you need a letter of recommendation, or maybe you need a letter to have continued financial aid because you're making good progress towards your degree. In those kinds of cases, you definitely want to include information about when you need that help by so your professor can make a better decision as to whether they do have time to get that done for you. And then finally, if you're looking for resources on campus and asking a professor for help, then it's a good idea to let them know what avenues you've already tried. Did you already go and talk to financial aid? Did you already go to the registrar? Have you talked to another professor about it? Let them know what you've tried already so they can suggest some alternate plans. So let's imagine you're halfway through General Bio 1 and the schedule has come out for spring registration and you notice there's only one section of General Bio 2 being offered in the spring and your registration date's really late you're afraid you're not going to get a seat. So what you want to know is whether there's going to be another section that will open up so that maybe you could register in that. So we're going to have a specific subject line. So how about um, additional section of general biology 2 in spring? And then how do we start out? We should always start with a salutation, right? Like, well, dear seems a little too close. How about just hello? Hello, Dr. Woolley. You definitely want to use the doctor. Unless somebody has instructed you to call them something else, always use doctor and the last name. Your faculty worked really hard for those doctorate degrees, and so seeing Mr. or Mrs. or Ms., eh, it doesn't really reflect the amount of work that they've put into their own education, and you know how much work it is. So, hello, Dr. Woolley. I am currently enrolled in General Biology 1. I have a late registration date. I wonder if there will be a second section. Spring. So that seems pretty straightforward. And then how about thank you in advance? It's always nice to say thank you. It doesn't hurt you at all. And then probably sign your complete name. So first name and last name. And actually, it might be helpful to include a student ID number, just in case Dr. Woolley wants to make sure you're good, making good progress in that class. So how about 002? Go ahead and type in your ID. And that looks complete. You've included who you are, including your name and your student ID, what the issue is, and what information you'd like to know. And that looks fine. So let's go ahead and send it and then just wait to see if we get a response. If we don't hear anything within maybe four or five days, then send a follow-up or even stop by Dr. Woolley's office. Great, see you in class.